Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, we got the full patch notes for the Black Ops 6 open beta update. So with this, there is a minor title update required, the 1.54 update, and it ended up going out later last night. So if you've been on your console or your PC uh, with yes within yesterday evening, you might have already gone through and downloaded this. But if you haven't, there will be a minor download before you can go through and actually play the game today. But with this, we ended up getting a bunch of updates and a bunch of changes to test out how we as a player base like some of these adjustments. And if we do, and if they go over well, obviously they'll probably make their way into the full game. But we've got our full patch notes for the September 6th update. As we do go through everything here, if you are new to the channel every single day, I got you covered with news, updates, patch notes, meta breakdowns, really everything going on in COD is right here. So feel free to hit that subscribe button to always guarantee you're up to date. And if you enjoy this video as we break down all the changes and updates a like rating would be really appreciated as it does help grow the channel and spread the video into the youtube algorithm but with our friday september 6 update they say welcome to weekend two of the bo6 beta before it opens up at 10 a.m pacific time so if you're watching this video before then it'll go live at 10 a.m pacific take a look at what's coming on behalf of treyarch thank you for an amazing week one we're grateful to everyone who played your feedback is critical to shaping bo6 many of the changes below are based on feedback from weekend one but rest assured we're also taking this into account as we look ahead to launch we'll be sharing more about about what's to come in the weeks after weekend two concludes if you're joining us for the first time the level caps up to 30 so we've got a couple of more levels to go through obviously as we already discussed in a video a couple of days back we've got a lot of new unlocks to get as we do go up through level 30 and we also have some new weekend two rewards including a new xm4 blueprints as well but initially here for some weapon updates weapon swap speeds we've seen the feedback about weapon swap speeds and we agree we'll be reducing the weapon drop times across the board for an overall increase to swap speeds players looking for an even quicker swap speed can try out the fast hand strategist perk in week two so rifles smgs shotties lmgs marksmen's pistols and launchers all had their drop time reduced by 50 milliseconds and the sniper drop time was reduced by 100 milliseconds so that'll be a decent bit faster now movement speeds we are making small adjustments to the baseline movement speeds on all weapon classes to make sure they're sitting in a good spot relative to one another we have mostly focused on move speeds and ads move speeds which come into play during combat Overall, we are happy with the weapon class usage and performance that we've seen so far, as well as the upper end of movement pacing offered by SMGs. So these adjustments keep SMGs the same and generally improve other classes. We are mindful of speeding up the game too much and will cause it will continue to monitor and assess game data and your feedback. Uh, the other notable change here is to melee sprint speeds. We want players to feel incentivized to pull out their dedicated melee as a move, uh, as a move, a map traversal or as a means of map traversal. We also want to ensure that melee users can catch up to other players who are sprinting with ranged weapons weapons for finishing moves so basically a bunch of movement speed updates to almost every category so rifles had their crouch ads speed uh increased their general move speed increased and their ads move speed increased smgs had their crouch speed increased shotties had ads crouch move speed and ads move speed increased lmgs ads crouch move speed and ads marksman's got all of that plus uh, i'd also got the general crouch speed increased snipers got their crouch speed decreased actually uh then pistols had a crouch speed decrease an ads crouch speed increase a move speed increase and an ads move speed decrease launchers a crouch speed decrease and then melees crouch speed increase jog speed increase sprint speed increase super sprint speed increase and then move speed increase so games should be a little bit faster this weekend for sure we then get our weapon adjustments here and of course first things first the jackal pdw is getting attacked right away decrease the maximum damage from 29 to 26 and the range by about a meter uh decrease the near to medium damage by one in the range by a couple of meters there 22 to 17 decrease the medium damage by four and the range by three meters and then the minimum damage by four uh small increase to view kick strength and view kick dv and then on the chf barrel the headshot multiplier was buffed so there's more risk and reward there the jackal pdw's intended strength is in be best in class handling a decent mobility balanced by slowing the rate of fire compared to many other automatic weapons it was overperforming at medium ranges so we've increased the damage fall off and pulled the ranges closer along with a slight inc increase to recoil maximum damage in the chf barrel headshot multiplier have been adjusted to maintain the same hit to kill numbers while using that attachment so that attachment now has more value to it with the headshot barrel but the base jackal is not going to be nearly as good on the c9 they increased the medium damage range by a couple of meters not anything too significant we feel that the c9 is in a good spot as a well-rounded smg with a solid rate of fire it has higher horizontal recoil compared to other subs so we've given it a boost to its medium damage range fall off 
Uh, then for Marksman's on the SWAT, disabled burst fire queuing, which was queuing an additional burst if the fire input was activated. So, so many times I was spamming my shots and then after I got the kill, I'd still accidentally fire another burst. So that's just nice uh, to have that fixed. This is a minor change to improve control with the SWAT and any future burst weapons. Uh, then in attachments, the rapid fire attachment now correctly displays its recoil penalty con. So there is an increase to recoil if you use rapid fire. The attachment description has also been updated. For general map updates here, adjusted the spawn logic across the board and adjusted spawn logic across several maps with the goal of reducing high frequency of spawn flipping. So they got a novel here for us. Our long-standing definition of a bad spawn is anytime a player deals or receives damage within three seconds of spawning, this is the cornerstone of building the spawn system. It does not change regardless of map or mode. We use this metric along with others to track bad spawns for BO6, meaning if you are dealt or received damage within three seconds in the weekend one of the beta, we saw it. Uh, as an example, our core mosh pit entry with the highest bad spawn rate in week one was Dom on Skyline, which means 4.2 out of every 100 spawns was a bad spawn. We're generally happy with our averages. We know that the average also consists of worst cases and we'll continue to assess throughout the lifetime of the game. We also recognize that we each have our own definition of what is a good spawn or a bad spawn, and it's not always about combat. For example, did I spawn too far from the hard, hard point, or am I on the other side of the map as the enemy team? The overarching spawn system and placement of spawns in a map are critical to the flow. It is our goal with BO6, as it has been in every game, to have a predictable spawn system so you can kind of spawn trap with that. This includes accounting for time between getting into an engagement before you're ready. For weekend two of the beta, we've adjusted general spawn lock Logic and targeted multiple maps with additional tuning changes with the goal of improving predictability and time to engagement. We know we have some work to do and we'll continue to process all that data. So spawns have been updated. We'll have to see just how much they're actually changed here. For score streaks on the RCXD, they improved the handling. On the Watchdog Helo, they increased the base health. And on the Hellstorm, they increased the cluster bomb damage radius. For equipment on the Thermo Grenade, they reduced the explosive ignition delay. For movement, slight increase to the time to enter the prone or uh, supine during a slide slight increase to all mantle speed slight decrease to the time before movements allowed from landing uh, on dive to prone slight increase to dive to prone landing friction on uh, progression for weapon xp increased awarded weapon xp which will decrease the amount of time needed to gain weapon levels the weapon speeds observed in weekend one were not intended they were too slow daily challenges they fixed a couple of bugs there and in general beta rewards earned in a match will now appear in the after action report for audio, increased player weapon firing audio, additional footstep audio adjustments were made. They reduced the audio levels for impact when taking damage, resolved an issue where shotguns could play more than intended number of hit impact sounds, resolved an issue where explosion sounds were not normal, an issue where sounds were not playing during the best play, and re-enabled a previously disabled audio occlusion on PS5. Uh, adjustments to the underlying best play logic will result in more varied and interesting best plays. They improved stability throughout various menus and added various localization issues or addressed various local uh, added localization issues addressed various localization issues. For settings, users should no longer encounter issues when switching their ADS transition timing to instant. Uh, in general, increase the duration of the lobby vote before matches to give players a better opportunity to vote and reduce the amount of camera motion in the dynamic death cam. For stability, they improved uh, stability in Skyline, the training course, and then server-side stability. And they say we'll be tracking live issues and posting about those. And of course, if there's anything significant that comes in the next few days in terms of updates, changes, this will be the place to be to stay up to date with all of it. But all that being said, those are all the patch notes for the open beta update here in Black Ops 6. And that's going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. And as mentioned, if you want to guarantee you're always up to date, hit that sub button on your way out. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day and I'll catch you later. Peace out.